What's the best writing job you've had, or what was your favorite book to write? This was my favorite book to write, no question. I loved doing the historical work. I loved immersing mm -hmm. myself in the period. I, uh, I love learning about sewing, I, even mm -hmm. though I, my vision is too bad and I can't do it. I, uh, I really liked being lost in this world. I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because um, one of the things that I thought as reading it was uh, there's this, uh, sewing machines make uh, a number of appearances, mm -hmm. uh, stand-ins for uh, many other things, but um, the, the first time the sewing machine is mentioned, I actually thought, wow, you know, would they have a sewing machine? A dirt poor family mm -hmm. in Kansas um, in 1890, would they have a sewing machine? Mm -hmm. and, and they must have. Yeah. But uh, or it, it was a, sort of a surprising thing to think about because mm -hmm. it put me in mind of my grandmother's old sewing machine with the, the treadle yes. at the bottom that went yeah. like this. Uh -huh. And uh, at some point that was suggested uh, by, I think, my father mm -hmm. uh, after my grandmother's death that she could have it. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 in contrast to your character being very excited about it, I recall her <laughs> suggestion to him that I really can't respond <laughs> about the sewing machine. So it was, a, it was an interesting thinking about me the mechanics of the mm -hmm. story and mm -hmm. the research. What's the worst writing job you've had? What's the one you were happiest to be done with? <laughs> Um, I was working as a, um, a very, very low-level copy editor for Los Angeles Magazine right after I graduated from college, and I was sent out to do interviews, little thumbnail, like people watch kinds of mm -hmm. interviews, uh, and I interviewed Marlon Brando's sister. Mm. That was right down there in the list of things I <laughs> did not <laughs> enjoy and did not why? want to what do. What was wrong with Marlon Brando's sister? It well, she, wa she had agreed to be interviewed because she had just come out with a book and she oh, wanted right. to talk about the book. Marlon Brando's sister was huge. She was the size of a Zeppelin. Hmm. And the only thing that the, the people at Los Angeles Magazine wanted me to talk about was to make snarky comments about Moo Moo's and, and how <laughs> she was spilling out the sides of her chair. and. Um, I was caught in the middle between these two factions, and nobody was happy with the copy that I wrote. So mm, finally, okay. Well, at least nobody was happy. That's a sign <laughs> of really going down the middle. Uh, so, what what led you away from a life of uh, aiding paparazzi? How did you decide <laughs> that? <you> partly. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I uh, I was young and snooty and much too artistic for mm -hmm. crass journalism. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and the idea of of the necessity of paychecks hadn't yet really made it into my mind. Okay. So if you weren't a writer, what's your fallback career? Sales. Sales? Yeah. And why? But, uh, I, uh, I can't sew, but I really like clothes, okay. despite the fact that I write in my PJs. But, uh, okay, I, right, yeah. uh, and I, I, like, uh, um, I like retail. I've, I've done it. I enjoy mm. it. I mm. have a good time with it. I like people. Okay. That's unusual for a writer. I think that must be sort of <laughs> odd that you know most people. Mo I don't think most writers su suggest that they like people that they like to observe, dissect, mm -hmm. describe. Mm -hmm. But interaction doesn't always seem to be the number one thing. <laughs> you know, a really good way to observe, dissect, and describe: talk to them. Talk to, them, interact. You, yeah. you find stuff out that way. Okay. Yeah, just wait till tomorrow, Doug. Wait till you see what I start writing. Right, great, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a blog? <laughs> I wouldn't tell you at this point if I did, but no, I don't. <laughs> okay, what uh, genre haven't you written that you'd like to try? Speaking of blogs. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, horror. Okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Are I, you a Stephen King fan? Uh, not so much. Okay. Sometimes there, there are a few, a few of them I am, but uh, but not so much. But I do. I, I admire good horror fiction. It's it has to be intelligent because there are so many great big yawning chasms of cliche that have to be avoided. Mm -hmm. And I like writing about characters at heightened states of emotion. Okay. Does that extend to horror movies? I'm curious. No. Like, no. No. Because no. by and large, they are so bad. Right, right. And, and, and they're so darn dumb. Okay. Well, we should um, uh, have you on for the Halloween version, and you could read your favorite mm -hmm. horror uh, fiction. Sure. Uh, what's on your nightstand right now? Who are you reading? Um, right at this moment, it's F. Scott Fitzgerald. It's uh, I, uh, on my nightstand because I'm getting ready to teach a seminar in uh, forms of the novel, and mm -hmm. you know, I've got Tender as the Night as one of the assigned texts. So. Okay. They're reading it, and I'm reading it. Is, it. is Fitzgerald a big influence of yours, or who are your big influences? Uh, he, I wish he were a big influence, because I so admire the elegance of his prose, but I, um, I, I, I tend not to move in that direction. I admire his work very much. 
Um, but you know, he's probably not so much of an influence. Um, I'm afraid that Flannery O'Connor, the great mid mid 20th century short story writer, is so much of an influence that it's altogether too evident. Um, I didn't see the misfit in this one at all. Yeah. Really <laughs> you just weren't looking. I wasn't. Well, yeah, <laughs> it might have been the first husband. I don't know. And uh, so, so certainly she's very very present in in just the way I put sentences together. Um, also, another mid 20th century writer, Bernard Malamud. Um, yeah. Is 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 on my mind a lot and is real present in my thinking. Okay. Mm. What's your secret vice of an author or a genre? Since we've already mentioned horror fiction, yeah, what would surprise your readers to know that you read? Um, this one uh, is horror of a different category. J. D. Salinger. Really. And particularly the J. D. Salinger of. Um, Race High the Roof Beam Carpenters, who's just so drippy and <laughs> self-indulgent, I can hardly even stand it, but he <laughs> is so what he is in that book, and, uh -huh. and uh, I would not recommend him to anybody. It's just... But you keep going back, uh, sort of there's, masochistically. There's something there it. that, uh, it, it's a little like the once a year binge on when you you buy the five pound bag of mini Snickers bars and eat them all in one sitting. That's that should be done only once a year? That, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I thought you knew that. No, I didn't know that. that yeah, wasn't, that's no a once a year event. That. I, I, I thought that was a weekly thing. And, and, then, and then you feel absolutely vile the next day. That also goes along with Right, yeah, well I think that's part of being born and raised in the Midwest. You know, you're supposed to... You I know, wasn't. That. Right, okay, that's I that's wasn't. right because the character ends up in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <This is laughs> Well, uh, again, the book is from Aaron McGraw. It is The Seamstress of Hollywood Boulevard, and there are many other books available. And I want to thank you very much for coming pleasure. in, talking to us today, and we look forward to your next book. Do you have the next book in mind, or is this...? No, I wish I did. I am, okay. I'm, as they say in Hollywood, between movies. Okay, well, you should write it about a, a well-meaning uh, but poorly paid um, interviewer. Uh, at at a, a large Midwestern university, something like that. I understand they're fascinating, but uh, not enough books have been written on that show. I like this. I'll move with it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. My pleasure, Doug. Thanks.